What's up, folks? Welcome to the Friday Live by By the Hood. This is our show every Friday that we come to speak with the community, chop it up, talk about you know various things going on in the world of business, investing, um, and ever we, whatever we want to talk about. You know, we can come on here, slander people, you know, talk trash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this episode is a pretty good episode, man. We got our brother uh, Coach Carter's in the building, man. You know, um, the unofficial third member of By the Hood. Uh, we, we got we got uh, young Tom coming coming to us real soon. You know, he's out in the field making plays, but he's supposed to be joining us in a minute. But, um, you know, before we get started, we see folks coming in now, so I don't want to go too crazy. I know it's going to be a lot of people to come and check out what we got going on. But let me talk to you, gentlemen. What's up, Malik? What's up, Core? How y'all? Man, I'm Amari, man. Amari, man. I'm, I'm looking at the news, man, watching France and Spain close down again, thinking, like, should I order some more food? Like, what should I do? Yeah, you got to get that TP in, man. Whatever you do, man, get the TP. You know, that go first. Yeah. Got, yeah. I got, get, I got, get the core I got freedom brand TP. I got freedom brand. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah, you gotta get chlor, you gotta get Clorox, uh, Clorox wipes and in 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 uh toilet paper, man. But they been they think that's crazy. They've been sold out though. It's hard to get your hands on some Clorox Clorox wipes now. Yeah, man, them joints been sold out since March, dog. That, that's that's it's, yo yo. I mean, they, they these shits all over Texas. I guess these motherfuckers don't wash their hands down here. <laughs> <laughs> this shit everywhere down here. Anybody, anybody watch it down south, man. Those are the things to Corey. Like, you know what I'm saying? We don't want that smoke. <laughs> I said it. Fuck it. We don't want none of that smoke. Yo. Um, shout out to uh, everybody checking in. For those checking in, do me a favor. Please hit the like button. Um, you know, make sure you share, share the button too. Yeah, man. Help us fight the algos, man. Hit the hit the like button, the love button, whatever y'all want to do, man. Shout yeah, out to we our be, we be rumbling the shit out these algos. Yeah, Donald, yo, what's up, dude? My man Don said that blue hat, though. That blue hat is fired. Yo, I got I, first of all, I got to put I got to put Corey on the uh, summer jam screen real quick to show the blue body hood hat. You know what I'm saying? He got the black welfare's black power T on. And, and I gotta show my brother Malik right now, man. Look at that. Look at that hoodie, man. This Malik hoodie look like man. money. Look at that. Black wealth is black power. He look like money right now. Yeah, yeah. he's spreading that message, man. Black wealth is black power, man. That hoodie is hard, man. I don't even got that green dog. I, I, I feel I feel like Bill Russell in this green right here. <laughs> <laughs> About to wear all the rings. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, man. Yo, uh, shout out, shout out to you, sis. Uh, happy Friday. Yo, yo, yo. Tessa, that's what's up. Um, Damien saying that uh, you can get those wipes in Target here in NYC now. So NYC got the, uh, you know, what I'm okay. saying. But Malik, like me, man. Malik, Malik is like me for the most part. We still out here um, hibernating, so we Instacart oh, game. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Listen, I, I, ain't been to, I ain't been to grocery stores since March 18th, man. Yeah. <laughs> we, team, <laughs> we team Instacart in these parts, man. You know what I'm saying, man? Um, let me see. Let me send a top another message, man. See what's up with him, man. But anyway, man, though, um, let's talk about some investing, though. What y'all do this week, though? You want to go first or you want me to go first, Malik? No, nah, go you go first. It's cool. All right. So uh, this week, as you can see by my, uh, my tag, the plug, you know what I mean? That's all I've been working with this week, man. So what I do, uh, uh, as far as uh running calls, cover calls, cash secure puts, it's all I've been doing, man. So I've been running the wheel. Really, I've been running like I want to. I want to say running the train on it because I've been just taking all they taking taking all they cash for plug. Um. So for those who may not know, can you explain what plug does? What kind of company is it? It's a it's a uh, energy company, right? So they provide batteries and energy services to uh for like um what you call the Jones the, uh, the for for industrial vehicles like the Jones that they use to the, like forklifts and stuff like that for like Walmart and Amazon and they also provide like backup generator services, hydrogen backup okay. generating uh, services for. Uh, for those kind of companies, so you know, like just in case the power go out, they got those. They got like they got uh, cells and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and they got like a lot of big, um, you know, clientele. So they, you know, they gonna be around for a minute as long as those companies in business, and they don't jack it up, they gonna be in business. And they gonna so, do all right. Let me ask you a question. Um, this week when you were running with them, I guess you ran both uh, puts and calls. Um, but yeah. how did it work out? Did the plug, the plug walk this week or went down this week? No, it went down. It went down, but I made money either way. So, cause I always, uh, I always run a um a naked put on my stuff. So, uh, I do a lot of stuff, right? Even though I'm only working with one company, 
I, I still do a lot of stuff. So I ran, I own, uh, I own 650 shares. I ran covered calls on 300 shares. I ran a cash secure put on, um, so basically I sold, I sold puts. So if it go backwards, I also make money. I ran those at 1350. Um, I also ran, um, so I ran covered calls on the shares that I got. And I also ran cash secure puts where I say I'll buy some more if it run backwards. And I ran a naked put. And just in case it ran backwards. So I ran a naked put at 1352. And it ran backwards because it was it started the week out at 1505. And okay. it ran backwards. So I made money on it running backwards. I also made money on the cash secure put. And I made money on the cover call. Even though so my stock lost money, but I made money this week. Let me so, ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. With plug, does plug seem, seem to run parallel to Tesla? It, at like 90%. Okay. So so 90% of the time, whatever Tesla's doing, they doing. But their their earnings is Friday. So I'm just I'm just running, I'm just riding it out. You know, I'm mean? not Friday, Thursday. It's on the fifth. All right, so, so with that being said, if you say about 90% of the time, they kind of mirror what Tesla does, but they're trading between, you know, 12 and $15, you probably can, you know, um, there's a lot of opportunity there. That's what it sounds like to me. And this is not investment yeah. price. Just yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm betting on, I'm betting on the future of hydrogen and I'm betting on the future of clean energy, right? Because that seems like this is the next wave. And so... That's one of the companies that I'm betting on on the future of clean energy. So there's it's a lot of companies in that space. Like I also, I was going to split my money between plug and ballot power, but I didn't feel like ballot power is plug, but the Canadian version. Okay. So I, I didn't, I didn't really want to be holding a Canadian company though. Cause I, you know, I was like, why well, split the money when I could just make all the money on the one company. It's easier to follow one company than it is too. Than that's it true. is too, you know what that's I mean. So, so, I don't have you, so basically, all week you were just you know um trading uh plug basically. Well, yep. you set you set the play up and let it go. Yeah, I set the play up. So like I said, I set it up on Monday, and then I check back on it when my alerts go off. So okay. that's that's basically it. Malik, and, did you, um, you do anything in the market this week? Yeah, I prayed. I prayed all market long. <laughs> 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 yo, yo, it's been discuss it's been disgusting out here all week. It's like it's like Jaws, man. It's blood and water right now. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, actually the only only thing I did was when them uh the XOK 140s for 2023, they rolled back and I bought some more of them to roll back. And um I might I might jump back in buy some more to roll back, man. Uh or something. If not them, something else. Maybe like ARK or SMH on the rollback. But I don't think I'm buying anything. Like unless there's something crazy happening on Monday, like like way more down, I'm probably going to chill until after the election before I buy anything. I haven't even done any, I haven't even sold any puts this week. The market has been so crazy. So I've really just been so all I did all week long was buy a couple of contracts. Okay. So how how your leaps doing though? Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but you still got that time to run, man. You still got time to run. Yeah, I, I, I mean, listen, January 2023, I'll be, listen, it, it'll be the it'll be the midterms by the time, it's time my, my option expires. That's a good point, man. Because I, I got some I got some leaps right now on Nokia, which which went down, that crazy went down crazily. But um, Nokia, this week. Nokia um, SLV, and XLF. I got that's the three leaps I'm holding on to. I'm on to January 2023 too, so I didn't even look at them because I already knew what it was. I said if I look at these, man, I'm a, I'm a, you know get a little attitude, so I didn't even look at them. But yeah, I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't even believe you XL left though, man. Why why XL left? I can't because the listen, financial man, services. They, here's what I know. Be down forever. Here's what I know, man. Here's what I do know. Uh -huh. Right. Any any sort of um downturn that I've seen in the economy in my entire life, the people that never lose are the banks. Banks don't lose. The system is set up for them to win, yo. The yeah. system is absolutely set up for them to win. I mean, they make the rules for Christ's sake. Like, it's crazy because I didn't really do anything in, in terms of the space this week. All my moves were made in cryptocurrency. Um, as you can see, my name right now, Eve Sweat. I'm in my crypto bag right now. But in doing that, 
you know, having conversations with, because I was basically picking the brain of a lot of the crypto experts I know. But in doing that, what I recognize is like, yo, banks ain't going to lose. Even in that space, they're accumulating so much crypto right now because they know what the next wave is and they will not be left out. The yeah, bank right. always win, dog. Yo, think about, think about like, all right, it's from the real estate aspect, right? Think about how the banks win. Like when, co basically, you have to get mortgage insurance. Who does that protect? The bank always. Think about how crazy that is. They make you pay for insurance to protect them. <laughs> how nuts is that, right? All right, yeah. so then they foreclose and they make their money on, they make their money five, six ways when they foreclose. It's mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole game is set up for the banks to win. So I say all that to say this. I know long term, they, the, I think the banks are going to take a nice bath first, but I think that they're going to bounce back. They're going to bounce back. How far? Like what, what, 10, 15 percent back? Not, not 20 percent. So. And, and again, and again, again, once it starts running up that way, I don't need it to, uh, you know, hit my number. Right. And the thing is, my number's not even that crazy anyway. I think my calls are like 29, 28, 29 dollars, something like that. And right now, is it like 24, 23, something like that? So it's not even that far off anyway. And once it starts running that way, I mean, so that's my thought there. Um, same with silver. I think that'll uh, bounce back. And the other one is Nokia. That was um, a gamble I had because they're one of the biggest companies in the 5G yeah, space. Like, Nokia got all good news, and then they took a damn bath. I was like, why? Like, they, they, didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't They didn't. They um, they didn't. didn't um, uh, match their earnings they were supposed to, like the projections on their earnings. But, again, they're one of the biggest players in the 5G space. So we'll see how, how that works out. But I got a couple years. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that's what's going on there, man. I was, I was thinking about you this week, Malik. I was like, boy, this is, it's a bloody time. I hope he's okay, cause, uh, you know, Malik be having the itchy bond finger. He be having the itchy, <laughs> itchy finger. Nah, <laughs> I, 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 I don't see, like, look, ever since, like, I don't do any swing trading, any day trading, none of that. I, I, all I, all I do, my long terms, they're there. If it fall back hard, I might pick up a contract or two. That's that. Otherwise, on the weekly, all I do is sell puts, sell calls, and I do that. And and now what I'm even doing is I'm not even selling calls on Monday or selling puts on Monday. Now I might sell them on Wednesday because I still got a pretty good premium. Is less risk because my money is only at risk for 49 hours. I I gotta evade 49 hours of really bad news, you know. So I make it. Out of, so what I found out is that Thursday, that that theta kicking heavy on Thursday. So mm -hmm. that premium dropped 50, 60 percent. But on but Monday to Wednesday, the fall off isn't that crazy. So like no, so I don't even sell and put on on Monday. So I put on Wednesday. So like I said, I make a little bit less money, but I got 48 hours less risk. Actually, you know, I'm on three days less risk. Yeah, I still look for my Monday. I haven't been getting mine filled because I've I've been um you know drawn with uh with my demands. <laughs> and, if, and if and if cats don't make my demands, I don't get my options filled. But let's go, let's go <laughs> to the folks. Hey, listen, yeah, man. Right, 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 right now, I'm like, yo, yo what's going on, bar? bar now, listen, up, bro. Like, sell, selling puts, man. It's just free money, man. It's just free, free money. money. Don't even got <laughs> on the stop. <laughs> free money. <laughs> Really What's good? Mark says plug, man. He's on that yeah, plug. Mark, that. What's good, bro. Adrian, what's going on? Are you? The shy. Absolutely, man. Yeah. So, you know. what's up, Jazz? How you doing? Up, Yo, what's going on, Jazz? Yeah, man. Green with you about that clean energy right there, man. Yeah. Fire, right? Okay, all right. I know that's 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 Malik's well, thing. It's an arc, crazy. Malik is an arc fanboy, man. He be out here yeah. while, listening to the podcast, watching the. Uh, yeah, he be he be on he be on the CEO back. Hey, listen, listen. That's, 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 that's his second day. <laughs> I watch the arc. I watch the arc YouTube. I get the arc newsletter. I'm, I go to <laughs> Instagram page. Yeah, all that, all that, yeah, man. Yeah, man. You be in her inbox, man. We hey, know listen. <laughs> Bro, what's up, Roby? How yeah, you? Yeah, what's, what's going on? Be, be more in the building. What's up, Kahan? Yo, what's going on, Kahan? Rich, what's going on, Rich? Rich? Yo, yeah, man. Yo, shout out to Rich, man. Rich, Rich has been um getting and coming at my neck for a long time. Him and him and Russ, man, about like you know getting my uh, my crypto thing set up right. So I'm finally set up right. So Rich, like, I'm just letting you know right now, man. I'm I'm, I'm trying to get these uh these, these 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 this bread just like you out here on um. In the crypto world, man, listen, Malik, they set me up right. 
If I can get like 20% on my money without doing anything. Yeah. Listen, man, that's what's going on in that world. That's what they're doing. So they put me down. So that's that's what 20 percent. 20 percent. Well, I they, 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 they move heavy, man. 20% they move heavy. trying to make me that's what we're doing right now in that space, man. So that space is popping. Yeah, got I got me. I got I gotta learn that space. 20 percent, do nothing. I'm, listen, you, you're I'm, like plug. You, 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 your family is the plug, man. He know how to I get know. it. He the plug. I know, I know, I know, man. But him want to help. He tell you everything, but he like. Listen, I told him he, he ain't listen, holding nobody hand. No, listen, last last year I was listen, he was talking to me. It was like Charlie Brown or like wah 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 wah. <laughs> I'm saying he's like, yo, that shit is on crazy. I'm like, listen, let me just give you a couple of dollars, man. You do he's like, nah, man, like you do it for yourself, you know. I see once you learn, <laughs> listen, once you learn, you feel dangerous, man. I'm at the point now, um, after the tutelage I got this past week where I really feel like I can just become unbanked. I was talking to Corey about this earlier. Like, dog, I'm about to, I'm about to become unbanked and just disappear from the world, like the boy Brill from Enemy of the State, <laughs> like, Gene, like like Gene Hackman. I'm just gonna be like living out in the wilderness, man. It's collecting bread. Anyway, man, though, um, shout out to everybody watching. Do me a favor, please share this. Um, hit the like button. Uh, you know, give us some questions as we get into the topic of this evening, man. Um, still waiting on Tom. My man Tom said he was out in the trenches. He, he probably, he probably, man. Hey, 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 Nairobi, Nairobi. Happy homecoming, man, on my joint. Ooh. Happy homecoming. Like it's, listen, it's the only brand I promote that's not black. It's crack. But it's black rum. The man. <laughs> the only God damn, my man about to be fired the hell up. You, 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 really, you, really, really, you, really, you really that sad about homecoming, huh? You got to put your pinky up when you drink that shit. Like, <laughs> you, really, you really that sad about homecoming, cuz? Yeah, no, listen, I'm hurt. You see my, you see my post? I, love I did, homecoming. I did see your post, dog. You was going through like a little nostalgia there, man. Yo, let's, that was last year. <laughs> yo. Oh, you still, you still turn like that, even these days, huh? Yeah, no, listen, man, listen. Yo, that, Corey, Malik be getting trashed at homecoming, cuz. I see. Oh, yeah. I was looking at the jaw. His face was, he was gleaming and glistening out that yeah, jaw. He listen. had, like, like alcohol was pouring out his face. Listen, homecoming, man, look, listen. Yeah, you're right, Jazz, cracking, cracking bull. But listen. Homecoming is a special time, man. That's why I listen. I'm I tell anybody black, right? I understand your parents want you to go to the best PWI. I get that. You know, they want you to go to the best possible PWI. They don't believe they say, I don't, you, you know, being all black isn't the real world. And my thing is, why be the real world? If I got four more years to live in all blackness, I got the rest of my life to be in the real world. Let me live in fantasy land for four years. I mean, get that. truth be told, <laughs> your real world, if you set it up that way, can be all black. But that's either him or I'm trying to set my real world up to look like a damn HBCU. You know. I don't want nothing to do with nobody that don't look like us. But, but to your point, though, there's nothing like an HBCU homecoming. You know what I'm saying? As an HBCU guy myself, dog. Like, it's a lot of the body. Listen, a lot of the body. Listen, so listen, up, in, up until Monday, including Sunday, 7 o'clock, you know, I'm going to be, you know, it's homecoming. I'm gonna have my fish sandwiches, my fried fish sandwiches. Is that? And I'm gonna be sipping on crack, and I'll be getting long, man. That's it. It's still homecoming in my mind. And, and I'm a weirdo. I've been to, I've been to like multiple. Like I, I go to other schools. I don't even go to my own school every year. Like I, you know, obviously Howard. Like if you've never been to a Howard homecoming, then I, I've I, never I, been to a Howard homecoming. You've never been to a Howard homecoming. Been to a Howard homecoming. Listen, uh, I was at a Howard homecoming before I was even college age. Like yeah, no, Howard listen, homecoming did, is, you know, Dell State. You know, Lincoln, I've been at Dell State. Mor Morgan State. I've been to a lot. I've never been to a Howard one, but I'm gonna tell you this, man. Listen, our rivals, NC such as rivals, North Carolina A and T. People say Howard homecoming, and I get it. A lot of people, but get the Greensboro. Get the Greensboro for a homecoming one time. And then you go look at Howard homecoming, like, you know what? The difference is, is like, in D.C., of course, you can get a pot. It's a lot of people, but in a and it's more of, like, black college southern people. The, the, the cultural difference between the north and the south is, is massive. So in DC, you're okay. going to get a lot of New York, a lot of Philly, a lot of Jersey, that. But and when you get to uh, A and T, you're going to get the Georgia, the South Carolina, the North Carolina. It's a it's a whole different type of black person when you get there. You know, the you, know, you go to Howard. You know, Howard is different. You get cats from California. 
Yeah, you do. You do. It's like you're a whole different animal. Like they from all over the world. You're not listen. I saw, remember you saw that, that that young lady a couple years ago got a damn modeling career just from being at Howard Homecoming. Hey man, yeah, Howard Homecoming. Whatever you got, man. listen. I've been there. You got you got to work whatever you got to get wherever you trying to go. If you if if they gonna pay her millions of dollars yearly to to do what she do, I'm I'm all for that. So so yeah. um. I got a question for y'all, right? Because I, I, I really wasn't a homecoming dude. I'll be, I'm more of a, you know, I like the bike weeks and in in the beach What's kind up, Jared? of stuff. I'm not really, I'm not really into the, into the parties, you know, a lot of that Life kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, but, uh, you know, like the band, you know, the bands and stuff, right? So. What, what, what do you all think about, you know, the bands and all of that kind of stuff? Talk, talk to me about that, because, you know, I've had the experience, like, because I've been to Dell State and I've also been to uh, Lincoln's. So, right. but I've, yeah. I've been, but Corey, I haven't Corey been. Moore. <clears throat> Corey Moore in the Freak Nick tip. That's what, that's what he basically was yeah, trying to say. What I, I, ain't really, I ain't really want, you know, I ain't really want to put my business <laughs> on the streets, but, you know. <laughs> Jim, says, Jim said enough. it for me. That's something else different though, like HBCU bands. That's a whole nother animal too, man. Like, listen, it's just any time you got the, the the football stadium empty to the band, come on, come on, man. It's a whole whole different nobody vibe. In seat. It's when a whole different life. Up, seats fill all the way up. Nobody watches the game and they watch the band. They there for the halftime show. And the halftime show, everything, man. So honestly, most of the time, I don't know the score at the end of the game. I have no idea who won and who didn't. I got to add, like, oh, where are they won? Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, so uh, as far as um, what's the investments, with, yeah, what's going on, Carrie? Yo, so uh, wh- as far as investments go, as for, um, what, what, what would that look like? So, who, you know, who make out down there is, is you know, bringing it back around to investment, how can we how can we make a couple dollars off of that? It's in the investment. Homecoming, world. Listen, homecoming. The the so I was a party dude. So when I was there, I made listen, man. One night, one homecoming, we had Fat Man Scoop there. I mean, I had Scoop a few times, and I love Fat Man Scoop. I got a lot of respect for Fat Man Scoop. Him and Little Flip. But the party was so crazy. The doors opened at 10. It was already a line. Dog, they were pushing up against the door like this and cracked the damn frame, broke the door off the hinges to get into the club. Damn. Yo, listen, mind you, I'm, I'm no, 19. We, we, want, we, we want to know how much bread you made, though. We trying to figure out how much bread you made. Yeah, yo, listen, listen, at the end of the night, I netted, I netted like 17000 which is one for a 20-year-old. At a party that I would have been at anyway, and it wasn't awesome. the Atlanta. So for Durham, seventeen racks is crazy. In Atlanta, it might have been a hundred thousand, right? But in Durham, mm-hmm. seventeen thousand. Yo, that was that was that was my, my best night, probably seventeen thousand. That's dope. At that that night, that was my night. Hey man, school. That's dope. How much he charged you though? Was that your that was your net profit, or that was before you paid him? No, no, that was the net. That was the net. Oh man. So, so we. Nice. We we paid him uh, at the time. This was mind you, this was probably like two thousand ninety nine, something like that. And so we uh, maybe maybe even oh one at that time period. So we paid him thirty five hundred plus three plane tickets, three hotel rooms, and uh, I'm gonna tell you that. that listen, he at Mexico for a really reason, man. He a green motherfucker. Yo. I'm gonna tell you what he did. Yo. So we go, we go out to eat. We go to um, we go to TGI Fridays, right? And so sitting on the table, mind you, I didn't put all my money out. I'm on Eve, really. And so we, it's like seven at the tables, like Scoop, his brother, Kendall, Young Sav, now, and Young Sav is now popping too. It's like seven at the table with Scoop at TGF Fridays. You know, he ordered uh, three meals, three entrees. I'm thinking he ordered for the table. That motherfucker ate all of it. <laughs> his name is Fat Man Scoop. His name ain't Skinny Man Scoop. What the fuck you thought was gonna happen? Like, yo, man, school. <laughs> the tab is on you. I'm about to get right. He got that. He got that. He got the. He got the mozzarella sticks. He got the buffalo wings. I'm like, oh, I'm about to get right. No, he ate all three meals and all three appetizers. But 
the reason why I bang with Scoop so heavy is when we first booked him, not, it was a different party, not that party, a different party. And there's another hater boy down there promoter. He was established. <clears throat> and his and he tried to stop us from making money, you know, which in hindsight, I don't even fault him because we went to his venue on a night that he wasn't there and that he already established it. And so we wanted to bring Scoop in to kind of, you know, make money on that night. I didn't understand the business back then. So he had Saturdays. We bought Scoop on a Sunday. And so what he tried to do is get Scoop to come in on that Saturday. But mind you, we promoted a party. We never gave Scoop a deposit. And so Scoop called us, was like, listen, your man trying to burn y'all. He's trying to, he trying to, you know, get me there. You ain't give me the deposit. So I really, you know, I could take that, take that bread over there. And you know, y'all doing y'all doing it wrong. And that, and I reflected that. And now we cut him his deposit check. He showed up. And then when he showed up, our party flopped. You know, and after that, and he still gave us a discount. He was like, listen, I know you're taking the L. And he went in his pocket and he gave us some of the bread back and was like, yo, keep going, like encouraging. I'm like, yo, I gotta respect that. You know, the money was in yeah. his pocket. Money was in his pocket. He could have, he ain't had to go back in his pocket. He was already paid, you know? But so, he was like, he put in his pocket and, and threw some bread back. Yeah, that's so love. Basically, basically investing in, in parties, if you know how to do it right, that's a, that's a good ROI if, if you're down there at yeah. HBCU, right? That's a distant oh, no, story. Listen, no, listen, I'm going to tell you this. I, I, my whole life was paid for for two and a half years of throwing parties. You know, I was I was making thousands a week, me and Dane, making thousands a week. You know, in a small town in Durham, so it's different now. Durham is way small bigger. town and tie it down. Durham is way bigger than it was when we was down there. Uh-huh. You know, Durham is not the and so we was down there, right? It was like when people always hear Raleigh Durham is together, and the reason mm-hmm. why we're together is because like the airport is in the middle of the two cities, but it's really segregated to where Raleigh was with for the white folks, except for Southeast Raleigh, it was black. And then Durham was some black people. You know, that's how it was. That's why we got Black Wall Street, Hayti, um, NC Mutual Life Insurance, um, Mechanic and Farmers Bank. You know, a lot of those and, and those institutions that there are still they're still there. Um, NC Mutual building was just sold for $32 million. Like that kind of upset me. But so let me ask you this question, though. Let me ask you this question. If mm-hmm. if you could go back, right, with the revenue you were generating, would you have bought more land down there back then? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm gonna tell you, man. I tried to buy a house my sophomore year in college down there, and the house was a five bedroom house, five bedrooms, um, three fireplaces, two bathrooms, and we were paying in rent. We were paying like nine hundred bucks, which was a, and that was like for the best of the that was a lot of money back then for sure, for sure nine hundred. But it was three of us, and the house was like forty five thousand. I think the interest rate back then was like nine percent, eight percent, whatever interest yeah. rates were. You know, and I was like, well, we could get this for like 600 and rent the rooms out. But I needed my roommate because all I had was uh, work study. I mean, my room- roommate had a job, but together we can do it. So he's like, all right, let's do it. I get to the house with the realtor. He don't show up. I go to the yard. He in a calf. It's chicken day. Wednesday. I know, you know, I know Wednesdays is a big day for like college. You know, it's chicken day. That's <laughs> it. So... So, so he in the calf. I'm like, yo, what's up? He's like, I'm gonna come next time. And he don't show up. The house is forty five thousand yeah. dollars. Now that house today, that house is no less than half a million dollars today. Wow. Yeah. No less than half a million wow. dollars. All right. It was, it was so, in the hood. But I recognize think even back then I recognized it that it was in the hood. But if you cross the bridge, you're downtown Durham. And even though downtown Durham back then was vacant, it was like it was all old tobacco warehouses and a couple of stores. Now downtown Durham is, is popping. It's, it's not like then. But I had that vision back then. I just couldn't pull it off by myself financially. All right. You know, so that, that's that's a good that's a good segue right there, man. Like having the vision but not executing, right? Because we all know that it's about execution and not just having a vision. All right. And, and also speaking of real estate. So we're gonna get into the main topic now. For those watching, do me a favor, please hit the like button, please share this. We're getting ready to jump into a, a, a real estate discussion. For those who don't know, um, Malik is a successful real estate developer and investor. 
in fact, um, he was so successful, he was able to walk away from his job and in, in, in real estate pace for his lifestyle. Um, and as you can see, he has that amazing hoodie on. Uh, black wealth is black power. I just got shorter it again because I think the hoodie is fire. Um, yeah, you can is. get those. Hit the link. Fire! Like black wealth is black power. <laughs> but no, so um, you got this program that you just released, right? What's that? I said I was going to talk about your program. I said you got this program that you just released, right? Um, that you're trying to take it to the next level in terms of helping someone else become a real estate investor. So um, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to let you explain exactly what you're doing because I thought it was amazing. We said we're going to come on and talk about it because a lot of times when you talk to people about um, you know real estate, they'll come to a seminar, they'll get the information, and then they won't do anything, and then they go to the next seminar and get the information. You know how that is. You know, we got the um, I'm about to move tumbles. They, they always about to do something. Mm -hmm. But so you said you tired of that and you want to take it to the next level to make sure someone gets started. So explain this uh, program you got going on right now. All right. So before I even jump into it, I just want to acknowledge the show halfway over and we were just shooting the shit the whole time. Right. So fun time. But, you know, money. <laughs> so, so we get we jump into it, you know, and this is real random. Right. So I was. I have this program set up to help people learn to be an investor. And it was really random, right? And it just so happens that I went under contract to purchase a house that I'm going to end up flipping. I actually settled on it yesterday that the um, seller showed up to settlement. She didn't do it before, but she finally showed up. I settled. I own the property. And I never saw the inside of the property, and it had fire damage. And I felt like it was a good learning opportunity. But at this, before I was uninterested in taking on students uh, and many people that asked me in the past, I never did it. One, I feel like they were being away. Um, two, I wasn't ready to be um, vulnerable to show all the mistakes that go on through the course of a project. Right now, I always pose, I'm very adamant about posting some mistakes and figures on the way, but I was uninterested and unwilling to show the like if I fumble an entire project, you know, to show that part of it. And then, but this house is like my biggest undertaking with the fire damage. I was like, you know what, this is a good opportunity for people to come and learn how to rehab this. And if they see this property being rehab, then that will take away some of the fear of seeing some of the other properties, right? And seeing what happens with this. And my goal is to show that fire damage or not, it don't matter, everything coming out. A fire damaged house and a house that your grandma live in and moved out of is the same exact condition. Because your grandma lived there, don't mean nothing to show, right? It's like the wiring is bad, the plumbing is bad, the heater don't work, all that gotta come out, it's a shell, you know? And so once you realize that a fire damaged house and your grandma's house is in the same really condition when you go to do a rehab, then every house really becomes the same. You know, it just looked different. It looks scarier because it's burnt up, but it's the same exact work, right? And then, so, okay, I want to take them through this process, and but to go a step further, to make sure that they start, I'm going, I decided to introduce them to my lenders so they can get financing, like the one that I use. And I decided to also, if they don't have an LLC, I'm um, gonna help them get an LLC. We're gonna help choose the right insurances. We're gonna run through the whole process and the people, and what nobody likes to do is give up their contractors. I'm gonna give them my subcontractor, they'll have my HVAC guy, my electrician, they'll have my plumber, uh, and my framer. Those are the ones that I can always count on. Everybody else, I can't necessarily always count on them, right? And the one thing that's coveted is the towel guy. I won't give a towel guy up. Nobody get the towel guy, right? But <laughs> I was going to say that. I was going to say that. Like, Monique is my guy, and I asked him for – first of all, shout out to my partner, Kerry, who's uh, who's watching on YouTube, because me and him hate contractors, right? Um, And he deals with the contractors more than I do, but we hate them all. So Malik said, I give you all my contractors, but you can't get my towel guy. So your towel yeah. guy must be amazing. Yeah, he's a legend, and he don't know that you talk about him like a legend. No, listen, um, no, the problem and by the way, we got we got Tom joining us too to uh you know to get to you know talk about what's going on. Yo, yo, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, what's going yeah, on, Tom? Yeah, you you in the van, Tom? 
Tom oh, out in the trenches, man. You don't mute Tom. Tom, you gotta unmute yourself when you want to talk. But real quick though, Malik, let me ask you this question, right? So you you right now you um you're a successful investor and developer and all that, right? Mm-hmm. But you made a lot of mistakes in the beginning because y'all heard you tell you about it. What was your first property? What was your first project like? I don't care if it was a flip or a buy and hold. How bad was it? What was your first project like? If you could take us back and talk about the mistakes you made. So I'll tell you. So there's one, right? One is the one I told you guys about that I put on all the time. That the first was my my rooming house. My rooming house, that was the very first one I bought at 22nd and Dolphin. And um, and twenty second and Dolphin. If those that don't know North Philadelphia, is like it's like the the devil's despair. It's like it's just pure poverty. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, yeah, I agree. So it's like anything anything can happen at twenty second and Dolphin. Like there's no street lights under trees. It's just darkness, you know. And that was at a time where my risk tolerance was higher. Cause I didn't have any kids, and I was like, Man, I ain't scared of nigga. I ain't going down to anybody, you know. But but I recognized that I was food going down there. I had a three story rooming house with eight rooms, and I'm getting I'm averaging eight hundred dollars a week out of that building. Mm-hmm. And when everybody when I go there, they know I'm coming up with a pocket full of cash. So I know food. So because I know that, I go there, I go there how I'm supposed to go there. When you a meal, you prepare like a porcupine. Instead, right. like you gotta, you gotta make sure that you, that you yeah, that right, yeah. Right? And so, and so knowing that, but then, um, you know, everything that could go wrong in that property, you know, I was a terrible landlord. I didn't fix the property up. You know, what I would do, I had to, uh, people, you know, people put the put the um, the lock boxes over the thermostat. I didn't do that. I got a, I got one with the pin code, so I didn't want them to break it. And I set it at 58 degrees just so the pipes wouldn't freeze. And the reason I did that is because no matter how hot he was, everybody's space heater always on anyway. So I'm like, shit, I'm going to need to read one of my, my oil bill and my electric bill. You know, so I had to heat on 58. You know, I was just a terrible landlord, but I was making money hand over fist in a little raggedy building. But I just got I got tired of the messy violence in there. I got tired of two a.m. phone calls. Yeah, he ate my noodles and noodles for the fight. You know, you know. Okay. I, can say this, I can say this without asking you. You probably weren't licensed to have a rooming house anyway. So you was drawn anyway. Um, no, no license. No like Hey, listen, listen, listen. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, man. Um, the per the not me. I didn't do it. The person I bought it from, they had um. They had it so the utility bills were very low, if anything at all. Got gotcha. you. So say less. Like, less. Say less. My point in asking my point in asking you that is that that you come from making mistakes, right? So it's not about oh, like yeah. you just know everything. Off the bat. You had mm-hmm. to learn this. And Tom, let me get to you now, Tom. And for those that don't know, Tom is a master wholesaler. Like Tom is out in the street right now, probably closing the deal. But I know that you um recently had went through a flip too. What kind of issues did you do like with your first flip? Um, I mean, basically everything that can go wrong went wrong. Um, I did, bro, my, I ain't gonna lie from demo. Like, my demo, I didn't have the right crew. Um, I tried to be cheap and use a U-Haul. Um, I wanted to do the demo myself and with a few friends. So, I was in there a little longer actually putting in the sweat equity, which is, I, I guess it's not a bad thing, but now that I know what I know. Yes, I'm, it is. I'd rather be in, you know, I'd rather be getting, getting some deals or whatever. Uh, let me see. I had I had one guy, maybe two guys, um, carpentry wise. I paid them daily, um, so they was juicing the hell out of me, working slow on some days. Um, I was too damn nice, so I'm bringing you know. Oh, I went and grabbed some food and this and that. So I'm feeding guys, and now they moving a little slower. Um, okay, that's framing. Uh, electric didn't go too bad. Um, my plumbing I did three times. Um, I never really wow. had the plumbing ran, but I didn't really have it checked the first time. So one guy did it. He didn't really check it. Told me it's good to sheetrock. I started sheetrocking. Um, I got always to the point of doing my bathroom floors. And I said, you know, before I put these floors down, let me check the water. Um, check the water. And I had a whole leak inside the living room. So I had to take some sheetrock down. 
and redo that, fix the plumbing. So that was my second time. The third time I went and checked it. And he didn't, uh, he didn't put the little purple sealer in, inside the PVC. So I finally get my uh, my garbage disposal when I'm using it and everything. And I guess all the, the power from the garbage disposal made the PVC fall out. So then my basement flooded. Um, I had to get that fixed. So that's plumbing. Um, insulation was pretty simple. You know, that wasn't too much. Other than me not having a vehicle. So I actually used like a four-door sedan to... To move around with uh with insulation sheet rock you know a guy from around the way through the sheet rock that was horrible he took all day he took on like three different jobs so he came when he felt like it and he wanted to come at night and find these other guys to do the work so i ended up doing most of that myself yeah it was a it was an experience um yo i know i know i know you had to be stressed out and pissed Going over plumbing three times is absolutely insane, but I, I understand you you, you. you you know, one of the things that um, you know, I guess you learn over time is sometimes it's better just to pay somebody to like you know pay, actually pay more than you you think you have to pay to, to get it done. Pay more, than right? Hey, let me tell you this, man. I have to do. By the time you do, by the time you do it three times, hey, go ahead, Malik. I, 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 could, I could never do it again. I could never do it again. But I'll I really purchase, I'll first. I'll purchase a pair of boxing gloves because at, at the point I was just so over it with contractors, and I'm like, you know, the next one gonna have to run. Like I was, <laughs> I was over it, and I was, starting, and I was starting with the cheap rock guy for this simple fact because, just like I said, the, the the water wasn't together, so we 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 bring a little water. You know what I'm saying? We using a little spot, so we ran out of water. And instead of calling me, he used what he thought was water, but it was piss. So, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. So, and then he's like extra, extra on the compound. So I got compound on the floor. He, while he's calling me, saying, "Hey, I need more compound," and I'm running the Home Depot buying compound and at the compound. So I, I really had a bad experience. Now to the point where I yeah. damn near didn't want to do any more flips. Like I was like, you know what? I'm done. Like this ain't it. I I can fight, but this house can fight a little better than me. So. I'm done. <laughs> Yo, shop Don says you can learn uh, most from real experiences, not that sunshine and rainbow BS. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have them on to talk about this because you guys could talk about the real deal. A lot of times you go online and you see people tell you you can make a million dollars and they give you all the you know all the good stuff, but they don't tell you about the bad pieces. And you got to be transparent and honest about that. Shout out to Mark. Mark, uh, you know, does does the same kind of work too. He's a developer. He says it happens. Experience is the best teacher. Right after that, I, I really didn't want to do anything after that. But then I followed up with kind of doing property management with REIT and then going through those, you know, basically nine units. Damn near new construction. I mean, we, we did, four, you know, the four projects. So that just kind of gave me a little more reassurance. So at this point now, I mean, honestly, after doing those nine units, I'd rather just really go straight into new construction because... I damn near did new construction, but I had to go through a little door like this big with all my material. So yeah. I put a new roof, new yeah. back walls, new everything. But I went through a little ass bedroom door, basically. So I don't think I want to do that anymore. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And that, those are some dope projects y'all did down there, too. Yeah, that, yeah that's what I was <laughs> Go on, says that. I could write a movie with all my real estate horror stories. Hey, and that's the thing, though. It's good to share the horror stories, though, right? It's, 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 it's good to share these though. at times as opposed to as opposed to not just sharing the, um, you know, all the, all the beautiful stuff. What did you get ready to say, Malik? And I was saying is my very, my very first flip, I still have that. I couldn't sell it. And then my second flip that I did, I could never do it again. But I rehabbed that whole house for 20000 I have no idea how I did it. I could never do it again. But the electrician wired the entire second floor on a one breaker. Everything. <laughs> what in the hell? Yeah. Yo, the whole floor is a one breaker <laughs> on the entire damn floor. Second no, floor. Basically, if you turn on your lights and your TV at the same time, your damn circuit breaker. Yeah. <laughs> your circuit yeah. break. And then, and listen, I couldn't, and I couldn't find, uh, first of all, I couldn't find him to come back. I'm glad I didn't. But the reason I couldn't find him is he got locked up. But, um, you know, but had I not found him, I didn't know it was a check. That's my second crib. I didn't know anything about it. 
And yeah, the whole the whole second floor was on one break. See, and I and this is what happens when you when you try to look out and hire certain folks. That's the like overlapping story that's happened with everybody. Um, and this is the point I was trying to make. What Mark just said. Mark said, "I've learned to pay the real contractors one time." Right. And that's kind of what and we're saying. Like, you know what I mean? like it's, it's always somebody. Who come to you. Shout out to you, Mark. Um, although, uh, Mark, we we did have to fire your guy because Mark Mark gave me a contractor and he was a bum too. But I don't blame you, Mark, because I think ninety percent of contractors. Are bum. Um, maybe but you that's know, a what happens, thing. Though, man, is when you I don't like the, the referrals because the guy treats me different than he treat my referrals. You know, like I get different work out of them, and so I like the referrals because then people, you know, I, I I don't really like it at all. You know, that's what happened. But so, yeah. like I said, man, point man, that's why I'm gonna make sure that whenever they come through, that's a fire. And, Right. And then when uh then when me and Tom linked up, it was real random. I actually just called him to be affiliate, but then I thought about his course and how we can marry the two. And so how matter of fact, Tom, you can just tell them about your program and I'll I'll bring it home. How do you how you um it would marry him? Yeah, so basically my <laughs> yeah, hold on real quick though. Hold time real quick, because I want I wanna I'm gonna explain to people why your course is part of it. Mark is laughing because we had to fire uh his guy. I'm not gonna say his name. Um, and Mark said that. Uh, hold up, real quick. Mark said he fired him too. <laughs> yeah, he's a bum. Carrie okay, said don't say his name. No advertisement. So he's definitely a bum. But Tom is a master wholesaler, and one of the things about wholesaling is being able to source deals and find deals. So with uh, Malik, um, putting his pro program together to actually teach someone hands on how to uh, go through the whole development process, the investment process. He thought a part of it uh, would make sense to figure out how to source deals. So Tom has his own program that's going to be incorporated with Malik's program, which is going to help someone. Maybe they want to be a wholesaler, but if not a wholesaler, how to source deals. So um, I, I know you're a master at it, Tom, because and the reason I know you're a master at it, like last time I saw you, I think I saw you at Lowe's. And that's right around the time that um, and I saw you after that. When we, me and you, like, you helped me do some work at the, at the crib with care, but. Before that, the last time I saw you was at Lowe's, and that was around the time you had made news in the paper because of your marketing. So, um, Tom, Tom is so good. Tom is so good at sourcing deals and marketing that uh, he actually made the news here in Philadelphia and the newspaper. They was looking for him. But, um, <laughs> front page, front page, front page. Don't, don't, that's on short. Front page. By the way, you made the front page of the paper. You know what I'm saying? And usually when somebody yeah, the front page, you made the front page of the Daily News. That's Put your light on, Tom. Yeah, so, it's for a whole different type of story. I said the same thing to my family. I said, I'm the first one to make the front page of the Daily News for something that's not illegal. <laughs> <laughs> but no, listen, though, um, for the folks out there, can you explain, like, how, like, not only the fact that you train them how to get leads and the source deals, right. but um, what Malik was telling me is their first one, you're going to set their funnel up for them. Yeah, so what I do is, what I, what I realize, you know, just kind of teaching wholesaling and teaching investing, like my whole thing behind teaching investing was more so that I started just kind of put, trying to put my friends on and something like, yo, listen, I got to wait for us to make some money. It's legal. You know what I'm saying? Like it's still the same kind of flip. It's the same kind of work. Um, and then people, you know, more and more people start reaching out. So that's how I got into teaching it. Um, and then also like when I was learning, I'd be reaching out to people and they just kind of gave me the cold shoulder. Like, ah, you know, I don't really got time. So I wanted to be the one to come back and really just kind of put everyone in the game. Um, but I realized, as you know, it's just a, it's actually, it's a lot of work, you know, it don't take a lot, it don't take a lot, but it's really a lot of work. It's a little tedious. And I found myself teaching people, but nobody was, was executing. So I figured, you know, the biggest thing is just taking that first step. So what I did is in my one-on-one -on -one mentoring, I have them choose a zip code and I give them a thousand leads from there. I have them set up a, uh, have them set up a, um, you know, on the, on the system I use on its website, they set up their login, they give me the login, um, they'll give me a, another phone number that they want to use if they don't want to use their personal number, and I'll take that thousand leads and I'll just start marketing to that campaign for them. So now, all the sellers that are replying, and you know, some of them are no, some of them are wrong number, but we're, we're just looking for the yes. You know, we're just looking for somebody to say, yes, I want to sell. And once they say, yes, I want to sell, we're just making that phone call. Making a phone call and locking the deal up. Okay, so you're going to actually walk them out first. You want to set it up for them. All they have to give you is a zip code. All they got to do is give me the zip code where you want right now, currently, 
Um, today I pulled the list for Atlanta, um, Dallas, Texas, and um, I got one in St. Louis I got to do tonight. So your system works like any city? Any city, any city, any state. It's more so just getting them sellers on the phone and see if they want to sell. I don't really teach wholesaling. I teach, you know, problem solving. If somebody is reaching out to you and say that they want to sell because the house is now a problem. So now I'm not just teaching wholesale. Like I kind of throw creative financing in there as well. Like I actually have another course I'm, I'm creating called the Reinvestor Profit course where I kind of dive into creative financing and then just different ways of reinvest the profit because honestly I've made so much money wholesaling when I first started, like my first six months, but I had no clue where the hell I find the money for the, to buy a house, you know, flip it fix it up, you know, how to use credit cards for house. I had no clue about any of that. So I just was a kid with a bunch of money and I stayed at the bar. I was kind of like what Corey told me. He was like, I'll be by the bar playing the little games and stuff. That was me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed that you're really doing some ninja stuff now. So I, I see now your thing is you wholesale to yourself and you get a bag at closing and you got yeah. at the property. That's, that's one of your new twists, right? Right, so that's what I kind of been saying, teaching them in my reinvestor profit course how to kind of wholesale it to yourself, or you know, how to just kind of how to join forces with other people and use your money to then just kind of reinvest that profit. My biggest thing is just like I said, I'm doing it in different states. My biggest thing, honestly, is just trying to just grow my network of people, you know, that's in the hood in different cities and states because you know Philly is going to get burnt out, and some of the other cities is going to have a a wave where you know property's going for a dollar five hundred and I rather just had little seeds planted all over, you know what I'm saying? And we just kind of run up a nice little check all over the, the US. I mean they owe us anyway. That's dope. So you can teach so if anyone comes into your course then you can teach them how to do that anywhere. And we got a question. Um it says hold up real quick. Uh can you split the thousand leads into four different zip codes? Uh, yeah but it won't be effective. I mean because you gotta think about it. You got what would, it, would, it, would it that be? Like twenty, what, 250? 250. Yeah, out of that two fifty, you, I might half that list might be wrong numbers. So it, it won't yeah, be, it won't be as effective because everything you know, I like to, I like to just kind of get one thousand and just bust down one whole zip code. I just did one on one four four for myself, and you know, a thousand properties. That's like four blocks, honestly. Yeah, yeah. here in Philly, so just kind of mess it up a little bit but i mean i don't i don't okay. just open it to people i don't open it to people who just want to wholesale i open it to you know investors as well because i got a lot of friends who, who are investors and they say oh where's the deals who got some deals you don't really make too much money as an investor with no deals so for some this investors, is true. They, some investors want to just you know they don't want to pay me or anybody else they want to learn to find a big self so shit i'll set you over that system as well go ahead and get your own deals honestly and, and for those just it only costs about five hundred to a thousand dollars to bring in one one lead, one deal. Five Sorry, so that so in your experience, five hundred to a thousand dollars to bring in one deal. And what 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 do you think is the average of that one deal? How much can you make on that one deal? Minimum five thousand. That's my minimum. I'm, I don't want to do this too because sometimes it can be too much work to only get you know a couple thousand. I'm I'm trying to go a minimum of five thousand. Minimum five grand. All right. So I, you know, for the first. You might get all the way to the you know the nitty gritty. You got a buyer, a seller, and this and that with the property, just to find out there's no water meter on the property. You know what I'm saying? And now you you got to wait 90 days for the or you know first of all you got to wait for the buyer to put the water meter on, then wait 90 days for an actual reader. So if I can't at least get five thousand, I mean I might just did all the shit from for nothing. So this I is true. But real quick though, for the folks that are just tuning in. Um, what we're talking about is how to become an investor and developer right now. So Tom and Malik have partnered up to to have this program. They're running a program. Malik, and first of all, congratulations, Malik. He just closed on a property yesterday. And what he's going to do with this property is he's going to take some students along and walk them through the entire process. Um, in that process, he's going to deal. You want to deal with the contractors. You're going to deal with the architect. You're going to deal with the financing. You're going to be like at the actual property with Malik as he talks to all these people and walk through how to put an actual deal together. Also, Tom's piece is going to teach you how to source deals. So you're going to learn how to source deals. But after you learn how to source deals, you're going to learn how to walk through from top to bottom how to take a property 
um, acquire a property and to, you know, run through and you're going to get all the contacts, Malik's contacts as well in terms of his lending, in terms of um, all his contractors with the exception of his tile guy. I got to find this tile guy. Y'all about, I got to do some research to find this tile guy because he will Malik. not give up the tile just, guy. Just walk behind Malik to yeah, the talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> we got to find this tile guy, man, because this tile guy is a legend because he won't give nobody the tile guy, but he'll give you everybody else, right? So he'll give you the framers, the demo guys, the electrician, the plumber, the roofer, oh, just no top. Oh, but anyway, oh, like, and, and, and thing is, what I, what I tell people, bro, I teach them how not to get burnt. Like contractors walk off the job, you know, contractors never show up, contractors do terrible work, contractors get locked up, contractors they get high, they get divorced, you know, they die, all of that, all that happens. So my thing is, let me teach you how not to get burnt, right? Like you, like you were saying, like pay one time, but you just never know what the circumstance is. And if I'm, if I'm giving you, if I'm telling you my HVAC guy is solid, he's going to do great work, no problem. My electrician, no problem. My plumber is no problem. My framer is no problem. Like that's really half of the, that's half the job. You know, where I struggle, like I still even still struggle with, with finished carpenters. I finished carpenters is my biggest problem because I'm very particular how I wanted to look. And not many people can give it that look. And either they're busy or they take on too many jobs or whatever circumstances. So I still struggle with the finished carpenters, but everything else, everybody's solid. And I'm like, yo, if you learn this and go through these people, then you are golden. You can do this yourself and have all the accounts. And then, and then like I said, the financing piece. And like the reason why I decided to go and become a general contractor is I'm going to help people to become a GC if they, if they choose to. I was totally against being a GC until me and one of my GCs had a disagreement and he threatened to pull his permit. Then I would have been stuck having to pay another contractor to come in to put their lights, what they're not going to want to do, or I had to do things the way that he did. But now that I'm situated with being able to pull permits, then that gun is not at my head no more. I took the control away from that GC hand by being able to put my own permits now. And like, that's just one of the things that I teach people. Like, that's important. You don't yep. want to have to be a hostage to nobody. You Period. said that the hardest part is a, a um. You said is that what did you say the piece that you still struggle with? You said it's a um a, a finished carpenter. The, the, the finished carpenter is right. That's hilarious because um I've had this conversation over the last month or so with Carrie and he said it like 30, 40 times to me. Like that's the hard part is the. As a matter of fact, he just commented too. He, he said it, that's the hardest part is the finished carpenter. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's interesting to hear from you, someone who's done a gazillion homes, that you still struggle with that one piece. Right. Um, but, now, but now, but now, here, but here, here's the way, Carrie. Listen, Carrie, I'm going to give you a quick. Here's a question for you, real uh, quick, though. Um, how long does it take to become a GC? Um, how fast can you take your OSHA 30 and get your insurance and submit to the city? You know, that's, that's all it is. Take your OSHA 30, you know, you have to get the car insurance and or, or if you have employees, or workman's compensation insurance. If not, then that's it. And you could just go get to the city, and you and you good. Ultra thirty, okay. you know, ultra thirty. There's just thirty hours. You could do it online. It's, it's not that difficult. And what were you getting ready to say to carry? You said that you got a, you got the, the solution for the. Uh... I was saying it then. So for your rentals, you can make it a little easier because for your rentals, if you choose, you if you don't, instead of putting the trim on the windows. You just sheetrock the windows in and box them. So you're not worried about the trim work, you know. And the baseboards, you know, nowadays they do the square baseboards. You could really just use a four-inch pine, paint it white, and have that. Anybody can put that down on some caulk, right? So you don't necessarily need to have a fine finished guy with those couple of things. So you really only need trim around your doors. It's really just the doors and like the, you know, like the four-inch baseboard. That's it. You know, and you're you'll be that's gonna take you a lot of, lot of headache, you know, but not trimming all the windows off. Hey, hey guy, I want here's a, a here's a comment. Like, oh, time, real quick, time. Time. Let's get this, I, I this. All right, hold real quick though. It says uh we had a contractor burn us. We showed up at his crib with those things. <laughs> he was getting out with his family. <laughs> he turned white as a ghost. We ended up getting our bread from a lawsuit though. 
one of the hardest parts in any business is mastering your emotions. That's a great point. You shouldn't have to go through that, though. You say the time. No, what I was saying, like an, another cool benefit of the of what me and Malik is doing is that while they're going through the process of you know dealing with this property, which could take a couple months, they can they can you know it's going to cost for the class, but in in a sense they can make money you know while wholesaling as well. So you make you know pay X amount of dollars for the class, but if you're bringing in you know mm -hmm. five, ten, twenty thousand from a deal, you know at, at the same time as going through the process of learning. You know how they, you know, deal with the lenders, do the construction, pull permits, or whatever. It's just really no way to kind of fail. You're making money hand over fist. Absolutely. So you can actually make money that's going to pay for y'all course, but also put some money in your pocket. That's that. I, I like the fact that y'all coming together for one. Just I think general. Also, that's going to make a lot of sense if you can wholesale because you're going to learn wholesaling and development all at the same time. Right, and you right. might find what, out. You might problem solving, problem solving. Yeah. Problem, problem solving. Problem solving. The, way, problem. the way I, and then the way yeah. I teach, the way I teach how to finance is basically with the credit card. So if you're spending, like I said, five hundred to a thousand dollars a month on a credit card, and you're bringing in five to ten thousand off a deal. You basically pay for the whole class for nothing. No, you know, yeah. it's all profit. Cool. You're, you're legit investing in yourself, and then coming out a beast. Right, and That's then so, how, how how they always say that the cliche, the one this very I don't cliches are real, but the one that really is real is it says you don't make money when you sell, you make money on a purchase, right? And if we if we teach you how to source your own deal and how to do your own work, so you're getting the property for the right price, and you can actually really self contract and save even more money. Now, even even if a deal costs a little bit more. It's okay because you can bring that price down. You're not really concerned about being burnt. I'm telling you, you're not. The, in, in my methods, it's impossible for you to be burnt. You can't. You're never going to lose from a contractor again once you learn these couple of things. You won't. Period. There's no contractor. You won't need to show up anybody there with no thing. You won't need to think about that law. You don't have to do none of that stuff. You ain't none of that stuff. You know, Listen, it's a short man. way. You never get burnt again. I promise you. I'm going to be at the crib trying to learn those strategies, man. How not to yeah, get burnt. Right? I'm about to show a bit of yeah. crib now. Like, <laughs> I'm not doing I work about getting burnt. I'm Here's saying. what I will say. What's dope, what's dope about what you guys are doing is I think that somebody's going to go through and say, look, I don't, I don't want to wholesale. I just want to develop. Or somebody's going to say the other way. I don't want to, um, you know, I don't want to be a problem solver. I, you know what I'm saying? Or I want to be a problem solver. I don't want to do How they say it. But I think that learning both makes you better at both. Right, so if you decide that you want to wholesale by learning what you learned from Malik, it's going to make you a better wholesaler, and vice versa. So, I think it's a no lose. But um, a couple more questions we got from our audience. Uh, says here's the question for you guys: In PA, can the owner not pull any permit on their own without a contractor's license? No. The, yeah, you can't uh, get this here. No, not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, and Mark I was, I was that on a rental. No. no. He said on the he rental, he used casing all around. Exactly, casing. Yep. All right. So we got a question coming from YouTube from Rich. Um, because you mentioned that you would help him set up an LLC. He wants to know what's the pros of doing that. So the LLC, so some lender won't lend to an individual, they'll only lend to an LLC. And then also, since you're rehabbing, uh, people do get hurt. I know one of one of my friends had a guy, he, he didn't have any steps. And the place and do fell from the second floor to the basement. So you want to have an LOC and extra insurance for those circumstances. You know, so that's the reason you're on the construction site. You have power tools, open steps, no railings, uh, falling debris. You want to have an LOC for that. You don't want to do it in your name. It's too much liability. Yeah. So uh, what is called limited liability. Uh, Master Kevin, shout out to Master Kevin checking in from YouTube. Wants to know what's the name of your course? The name of the course is called it's called Developer Training. I actually just set up a gum road for it. I had problems with it last night, but Tom also set up a gum road. You know, we can actually share the gum road account. If anybody yeah. that's interested in uh, Master, gum road. Master Kevin, what I'll do is, um, you know, I, I'll come back in, I'll reply to you, and I'll put it in there once once I get my affiliate link. I'm gonna put it in the um, I'll put it in there, I'll reply to your comments, so I'll make sure that you have. 
uh, the actual name of the course, and you can contact them directly. They heard me. That's why he's laughing. <laughs> yeah, because I yeah I ain't doing nothing without my affiliate link, like, dog. I'm 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 gonna just let you know. know what I mean, <laughs> listen, we gum roll gangsters over here, man. We gum roll gangsters over here. Listen though, but um, I think what you guys are doing is amazing because you know, like I said in the beginning when we first started talking, um one of the things that people have problems with is actually taking action, right? They can take courses, they can read Rich Dad, Poor Dad 56 times, but until you take action, you won't actually learn. And now you can work hands-on with someone with experience. Um, and and then, according and to him, then, he, then, he, you'll never what get I, burnt. What I, what I, what I, you'll, never, you'll never get burnt. You'll never get burnt. I promise you, you'll never get burnt. So what I, I do want to say this, right, is I... I try to make it interactive, right? We want to make it interactive. So it's not a situation where it's like, hey, guys, I bought this house. Watch me work. No, we're going to sit down and I'm going to talk through the numbers of the project. And I'm also going to walk through the decisions in the project. And I'm, I'm going to talk it out and actually help have them come to a conclusion on what's the best route for finance. At the end of the day, it's my money, right? I'm gonna do what I wanna do, but we can talk through and try to guide them through the best way to finance this project, right? We can talk yeah. about sourcing the material. We could, um, you know, we can talk about um, layout. We can talk about, you know, so it's not like, here's my layout, so I'm gonna do. It's like, no, let's talk about it. Let's figure out a way together to get the best bank for this buck. You know, here, he's the choice of the cabinets. Why do I choose these? You know, is this is this property better to sell or is it better to um, is it better to to keep? Right. You know, what type of what type of floors and why? And like having like really be involved and not just watch me. And I have a new caveat that I came up with today that I told somebody is when they take notes, they cannot type the notes. They cannot type it in the computer. They cannot type the notes in their phone because we all know that the brain. Um, Works better. Brain, what's it, Corey? It, the brain works better when you write. When you write, like you'll retain more information in your own handwriting. So yep. no, you could read and later you could retype it, but initially when you take notes, I need you to have pen to pad. That's, a, that's another caveat that I added today because I want people to actually come out here and really get to it, you know, and also it's a little bit selfish, right? Now, when I say it's a little bit selfish, is is about helping people become developers. It really helped me out because my area of Kyle Street is getting a little expensive. Now, if we pick a little pocket and we all converge in that pocket, then now we can buy it for the low. But I already know that or I got two, three. They got two, three. They got two, three. So I already know what's coming. So we create in our own little enclave. But doing it that way, we buy it for the low, but we know all the blight around there is what we're going to do, you know, and make sure everybody, we do small stuff, like have colorful doors, right? Put out a planter, a colorful planter in front. You know, we take turns, we, you know, clean up the block. We, we you know, everybody put the, the solar power um, floodlights at the top of the house in the front and back to bring more light to the block to cut down on the crime and everybody doing these things together if we buy enough houses we can have our own little our own little association fee where we paying you know we, we might we might you know even buy an evac to put into my garage and evac come around to clean the debris up clean the trash up in our own little neighborhood like we can do these things together individually i can't buy 400 houses but yeah. collectively we can make yeah, whatever whatever right. Which is why you guys are on by the hood, right? So, it, it, but it's also, I don't, know if you guys, I don't know if you guys are paying attention to this, but what, but what, what you also get out of this is you get a future investor, right? If he's the one training you and you bring a deal, guess what? You could partner up. You know what I'm saying? We believe in collaboration over competition. Like we, oh, we live by that. Yeah, we live by that. So this is an opportunity to actually get him, get within the network and, you know, to, to, to go off to the races and this, you know, start to become a developer right away and it's hands-on so it's not like any other course you've had where you just get a book or you get some videos this is actually hands-on um and you'll be able to contact you know contact directly you know what i'm saying i just wanted to let you know real quick malik that um you know jazz is checking in and said that uh you know she also need that affiliate link by the way i'm just hey, listen, you can, you can definitely <laughs> <laughs> shout out to chad um Damien Bain says he likes that idea, man. It's an amazing yeah. idea, man. This whole idea is amazing. I'm 
I'm not leaving this nobody. Is, this, is, this is literally buying the hood. <laughs> yeah, listen, yeah. I'm just dedicating. I'm I'm dedicating a lot of time to these people, man. Like I'm not just going to. It's not just like yo, here y'all. You know, watch this, watch this video. I got it. Like I'm really putting a lot of time and thought, and and I actually if I need to cut it down some because every day I keep thinking something new. I need to add on. They're gonna get tired of me. Like I'm already setting up Zoom calls with certain people. You know, I already got. I mean, you no, know, but but and what I'm thinking about doing. You and listen. You, you might have to edit this for the replay version, but I might actually end up doing is buying everybody Aisha book. You know, because mindset is important too. So my, you know, with the proceeds, buy Aisha book for everybody in the course to have, you know, so like these type of things, because it's not just about how to buy a house, it's why to buy a house, why to rehab mm -hmm. it, why to keep it, why to sell it. That's just as important as doing it, even more important than doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also you gotta you gotta make sure you get them on your time and space because that's 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 a classic. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. I have to put that out there real quick. <laughs> you definitely got to get on your time and space, man. And shout out to Tom though. Tom pulled up on me one day and bought like 50 of them. So Tom is that guy. But listen though, Jasmine yeah. um said Malik, a great teacher. He taught me, and Jasmine is out there killing it right now. Like yeah. um, Jasmine, Jasmine buying all kinds of houses, and you know, um, so salute yeah. to Jasmine. So <laughs> Um, yeah, she got an amazing, she got an amazing thing going on, man. Too like she really out here doing the work too. Worst student, she, she's my worst student, man. She, she hard. She, 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 listen, Jasmine, she hard headed until it's her idea. She listen. Hey, I came with the idea next week. I came with the idea. I just did that. I'm like, all right, yeah, you're right. What's your idea? You, you came up with that, Jasmine. Hey, no, hey Jazz, that's, that's not me. That's Malik. But Jazz is out here doing good work. <laughs> Jazz is out here doing good work. So um, he already has successful students. I know you already had a couple people sign up. Let me ask you this question, though. Um, are you guys capping the amount of folks that you allow to take this course? So it got to be 10. It got to be 10 because I really don't want to. I really don't want to be out here talking because I know me. I know I'm going to put extra work in. I mean, like even today, before it even started, I met with somebody. I met with somebody today. And we took him to two houses. In fact, he came to the house with me today and saw the house with me. I never, in fact, put the video up. We both did off together today. And then I took him to another house that I got. It's almost done. We walked through that house. I explained that house today. And then we, um, it's a jazz man. And then on top of that, I already got, I got three off market deals that I haven't even seen yet. I'm going to tell you now, I'm like, yo, if you want to get in the game, you want to pick one of these right here. And I told him the cost that we're getting it for, very transparent, before we had to put any juice on top. Like, listen, this is what we're getting it for. It's going to be juice, but this is what the numbers are right here. So you know in advance, right? And so he's getting, and the class hasn't even started yet, and I already put like two hours into somebody. So I know yeah. I can't, it got to be, I got to limit it at, at 10 people. Plus, you know, even with COVID, I don't want to crowd the house and crowd the contractors. Plus, I still want to, so we can really only have 10 people. That, that's, okay. that's, that's enough. We can't do any more. And here's, what I, and here's what I say, because I know Malik is going to hook me, hook us up at From By The Hood with our, um, not he got his gum road with an affiliate. Anybody that comes to us, we actually go, are going to throw in um, two courses. We're going to throw in two stock market courses, right? So here's mm -hmm. what you're going to get. You come through by the hood and to sign up for Malik's program, you're going to get Tom's course um, on wholesaling and problem solving. You're going to get the one on one with Malik and you'll also get intro and analysis of the stock market. Right. So what's that going to do for you? That's going to give you everything you need to get wealthy. And simple. As and, that. simple. So, and the same access you get to Malik with his course, you get that same access to me and Jim with our course. And you, you, get, get, you, get, access our, yeah, you get access to our private group. You know what I'm saying? We talk about investing in trade and options, the whole nine. Um, we, we in every space. We got the precious metals course coming up soon. But you get access to all of that um, if you come through, you know, come through us. And I'll, I'll make sure that within the description or if you have any questions about this, you can also inbox us right here at By the Hood. And um, Malik and Tom, I'll make sure you guys get their uh, contact info, too, if you want to hit them up directly. But anybody that comes to us for this course, we're going to throw in some bonuses ourselves because we want to make sure that, uh, you know, Everybody has everything they need. And um, shout out to Tara, who just uh, left a comment, says her book is a great read. That's right. Shout out to yeah. Malik, man. 
That's right. Ish, Ish is a legend, man. Ish, Ish is from, you know, that's that Central High education, dog. You know how we give it up. Dear um, high. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, her book is amazing, though. Uh, and shout out to Ish, man. We got to get Ish back on here. But um, yeah, man. So I, I think that what you got going on now is dope, man. I, I want to say salute to you for doing that um because it was a great idea especially with you got this new project coming up because um they're going to get to meet with your architect too right yeah the architect and we're going to need the engineer too we need the engineer also because we're, we're moving this okay 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 so explain that uh, to the audience nice. right now so when you when you're working on a small home like that what 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 uh kind of occasion makes you have to bring an engineer in so anytime you're doing anything structural, and you know what's weird? The city of Philadelphia, even if you fix one lentil over a window, it's super easy, but a lentil is considered structural. So you really should engage an engineer and an architect. You know, so in gotcha. this case, in this case, where we're not moving the steps, we're widening widening this the destination is so narrow and the house is, is a little smaller. So I have to finish the basement you know, to add some more space to the house and, you know, put an extra bathroom in there, these type of thing. And so we're going to have to widen the steps. We have to engage an engineer and an architect. We have to no wait around it. Okay, but your students get that. Your students will be there or, or at least, like, you know, have some um, access to uh, learn. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Not only that, you know, we're going to walk through the house. The house had a fire, so there's a whole bunch of burnt stuff up in there. So I kind of got to get that cleared out, make, it, make, make the space safe. But once that once it's safe, we bring the engineer, you know, and we could like actually what I probably would do is once we get it cleaned out, meet with the students first to kind of get their ideas and ways, you know, and also benefits me because somebody might come with a fire idea that I didn't think of right for the house. And so we yeah. kind of be together a, a floor print together and come up with a, a good way to make it a, a functioning, usable house. And they might even bring a buyer. And if they bring a buyer, I pay like a realtor. I, you know, they get a percentage of that too. You know. So. Okay. All right. So you got to, it's, it's all kinds of opportunities here, man. Shout out to uh, our brother. My, Year one. You already know two five four. You know, you know, y'all don't get that. Like, if you know, you know. Um, shout out to yeah, Don right here. Yeah. Don says both great reads. Literally the one two punch. I agree with that. Like we don't we don't need yeah, to be a no more. Doing our own thing, man. What he's talking about is yeah. this right here on your time and space, right? On your time and space, you know, what I mean, it's, it's, it's the black guy, the building wealth, but um, you know, so but, but, but anyway, man, listen, man, just, like I, I never so I mentioned this before to you guys. I never, I never mentioned this in a public space, you know, but we really need to have more black people in particular in development in general, and but. The reason why Philadelphia is so important is I, I always add, I'm 42, right? So if you're of a certain age, then you should remember. In fact, Matt, before I even continue, comment, comment below if you know Washington nickname, Washington DC's nickname. Comment below, comment down below if you know Washington DC's nickname. Oh, right. I know what it is. Ooh, 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 hey, ooh, don't say it, don't say it, but we know ooh, what it is. Ooh, ooh. We know, we know the old DC nickname, but what's your point about that nickname? Right. And so, and so the point is, Philadelphia is really only like seven to eight years behind where DC is. It's not, it's not that far removed from where DC is, right? We understand, and I had this conversation today with a student. Actually, you had this count, kind of, Top Chocolate City. There you go. And listen, when you go to DC, how much chocolate do you see? You don't see no chocolate. Not, near, not nearly as much as you used to. You it used to be an eighty-five percent. It used to be an eighty-five percent black city. <laughs> listen, so it's, it's tapioca and frozen yogurt right now. Ain't no chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Tapioca City. <laughs> yo, Malik, wild as shit, yo. Call it, call it Froyo City. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Froyo City. But listen though, uh, so yo, so you're saying that bro. particularly we need we need more we need more black developers in Philadelphia. Right? Listen, so the reason the reason is this, right? We have, we still got the most valuable property in the city. 
We still, we still, even today, we still have, okay, the Rittenhouse Squares. But when you're looking at where I am, Kyle's Creek, it's really still all black, right? See, the park has changed a lot, but it's still 50% black. You know, Carroll Park, all black. When you look at um, Brewery Town, was all black, still mostly black. Yes, the neighborhood is changing, but most of them probably in Brewery Town are still owned by black people. Strawberry Mansion is like 99% black. Even though yeah. House of Strawberry Mansion, a rehab is selling for 400000 the rest of the neighborhood is still all black. The Temple area is still all black. That 1922 area, like that um, that East Kensington, is Spanish and black. There's still a lot of opportunities for us to get rich. Philly, 1933, we got whole zip codes that's full of black people sitting on gold. Grace Ferry is still mostly black. Point Breeze, even though Point Breeze had years of development. Shout to Kenny Gamble for starting that. He's 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 underappreciated as a developer. Everybody knows him as a songwriter, but he's very underappreciated as a developer. You know, Kenny Gamble, Kenny Gamble got a HUD secretary fired. That's power. He got Alfonso but Jackson, even though he's a he was a black HUD secretary, but it don't matter. Kenny Gamble's reach was so high that he got a HUD secretary fired for shady dealings here in Philadelphia. Not mm -hmm. mad at that. And so, so for people that don't know, the Martin Luther King houses, the projects, Kenny Gamble wanted that deal. It did some kind of backroom deal with another developer. And over there, Kenny Gamble didn't get it. Something happened. It went up the chain. The HUD director, Alfonso Ellis, I think it was. And this dude was so powerful and so rich. He lived in the same apartment I'm sorry, the same development where George Bush was when he was the president. He lived uh, he read real paper. He lived there and got him fired. So Kenny Gamble does not get enough um appreciation for the work that he put in, in South Philly. I mean, he literally he literally built his own community. Like yeah, I, 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 I did some work on some of his stuff. He literally built his own community. No, so he's a he's a he's a developer. Look, so Kenny Gamble, Kenny Gamble. Change the way that I think about development and real estate and ownership and a statement. So my mentor at the time was very was was cool with Kenny Gamble. We used to match it a few times. I'm talking to Kenny. And with Kenny, he used to live in Gladwin. Now he had those two houses up outside that he could, you know, he rehab in the one house. And he built the magic across the street and he built the school across the other street. And the reason why he did that wasn't for the community per se. He did that because he said he wanted, he, it wasn't enough Muslim girls for his son to choose from. Bro, he that's, built a school and a marriage so his kids could have Muslim women to choose from. Yo, when I heard that, I'm like, yo, that, that's wealth. That ain't rich, that's wealth. Yeah, he on that's a different, different level. Yeah, that's different that's right there, That's next man. level thinking. That's yo. different right there, man. Yeah, Lamont, yeah, one now, one two two in the house, literally double on yeah, yeah, You know what I'm saying? And so when he said that, yo, my whole perspective, I'm like, yo, I'm not thinking big enough yeah. to build a school in the masjid just so your sons can have Muslim women to choose from. You know how powerful that is. I know that. And so yeah. I'm like, okay, he he his whole thought pattern was different, you know. Yeah. And so now it's like, all right. And so he's he's really underappreciated. I think. Everybody talked to him about only music, and but not as not as a developer. And I think that we're missing out. But we're, we're, we're missing out on the chance to talk to one of the great developers of Philadelphia, but only talking to him about music. You know. So and so, so yeah. the goal is to build more developers. The goal is to duplicate the kind of work that you're doing, the kind of work Tom is doing, and build other developers. Right. Listen, listen, listen. Real, 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 real estate, real estate made me a millionaire, man. And and I didn't have a mentor about it. I wasn't smart about it. I just happened to buy real estate when it was cheap and kept it and didn't sell it. You know, and that's what it is. And everybody can do that same thing. It's like we don't have to knock nobody over the head. We don't have to sell dope. All we gotta do is collect a little bit of rent for a few years, deal with some headaches, and we all be millionaires, you know. And then on top of that. It's just like the way Philadelphia is changing. And I think I think you, you know the two the earlier. Somebody said it earlier. Um, Silicon Valley, right? So the people on this call probably never heard of Silicon Valley. I'm in real estate. I just heard Silicon Valley a quarter ago. 
right? They may think Silicon, you saying Silicon? No, I'm not saying Silicon Valley. I'm not talking about Apple, Facebook, all the tech companies in California. Silicon Valley. They're calling Philadelphia Silicon Valley because all of the biotechnology companies and startups are coming to Philadelphia. There's a company called Roche, R-O-C-H. They are publicly traded. They are. They just financed another tech startup that started at 37th and Market. Then they, they funded them and they moved them down to the Navy Yard to expand their biotechnology buildings. You know, the pen on Grace Ferry tells you anything. It's called Pen Innovation Square. They're doing all innovations there, right? And yeah. go, go around Penn. All on buildings being built. All those buildings being built over there are doctor's offices. That means you have to have people, doctors, to fill them up. You have to have scientists to fill. They're not building a uh, two million square feet to be empty. They already know they sold out. Right. And so these are going to be all technology spaces, all biotechnology at that. These are all startups here in the city of Philadelphia. And the people that are moving. People, first of all, Philadelphia does a poor job of educating the citizens for these jobs. So we know mm -hmm. that the people taking these jobs are not going to be from Philadelphia. They're going to be moving here. They're going to need housing. So basically what you're saying is like you can see the writing on the wall in terms of what's going to happen. And also, by the way, I'm not um, ignoring your, uh, your question. Um, just to let you know, uh, Kev, we're gonna we're gonna get all that together, and I'll make sure that you get the information about uh about what it is. We're still working on that now. Um, yeah, you go, 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 <laughs> got a comment, you go. got a comment from uh, Kev says, man, you know you miss PHA, man. Oh man, <laughs> man, 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 listen, listen. I'm gonna tell you this, Kev. Listen, I miss I miss the people at PHA, but that stress level at PHA. <laughs> like, I'm still, I'm, he I'm out still, on that. I'm still, I'm still traumatized, man, by 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 PHA. And I, I mean, like, right, like, like legit traumatized. Like, honestly, I, I I really feel bad for people that stay there till they retire. Like, I feel like I have a broken heart for them, you know, because uh, I see my, I got. Like, was, it, was, it, was it because of the position you held though? Like, because you didn't work in the office, right? You worked at the at the facility. I worked, I worked at the site, but the thing is. PHA is a thrown under the bus culture, right? Okay. And so where where we are at the site, we get it from both sides, right? We're dealing with the neighborhoods, right? And then with and we get it from the neighborhood, from the from the tenant side, from the land that side, and then we also get it from the executive side. So when I first started, I worked at Blumberg, which is knocked down now. Is that for those that don't know, it's at 23rd and Jefferson with the high rises, right? We managed 510 units, three high rises and the low rises. When I first started, I started in December. There was no heat or hot water in the high rises until March. But they still looking at us like, yo, why are your rent collection low? What the fuck do you mean? What do you mean why is the rent collection low? What do you mean why it's low? There's no heat or hot water in the middle of winter. That went over three years straight. And they want us to collect rent in those circumstances. They Hold want on, us so to you, actually, you actually you actually had to collect the rent. That's part of what that was part of your uh, job. I was probably manager. Yeah, I need to. I had to have that rent collection up. Yeah. So you were in the projects trying to collect rent when you, when you just no heat, no heat, not water. <laughs> oh man, you live through that. You a gangster. They, they set you up. Yeah, no, they trying to. They you set know, you up and just sat down. Listen for th for three years in a row, and here's a and here's why. The public, the public needs to have more control over public money. But they they spent millions of dollars right towards the end. They spent millions of dollars putting in a whole new heating system for the high rises, right? And then two years later, they tore them bitches down. They spent millions of dollars, and thing is, they were already going to tear the buildings down anyway. But they spent they spent millions of dollars putting a whole new heating system and then tear the buildings down. That's crazy. That's reckless, man. Yo, I love our audience, yo. Our audience is hilarious, yo. Uh, shout out to Adrian, man. The comments got me dying. Yeah, bye, bye, bye before the, <laughs> before the clear. <laughs> on, on facts on facts. <laughs> um, this is, uh, oh, man, plus that Philly 2035 vision plan lays it all out what the city wants to do, right? So that's a great point, Damian, man. We've been on for a minute, though, but I just um, before we close up, I just want to say this, man. I think the program that you guys got is amazing. 
Um, everybody who's watching on YouTube and Facebook, I'll make sure you get the link to check out, um, you know, the, the all the different um, aspects of the program, what they got going on. Um, it's going to give you the price on everything. They're working on it now. going to give you the price on everything. Um, and also, Tom uh, said that he has a way that you don't even have to pay the full thing up front. So um, we're going to get you all that information. But this is an opportunity for someone who's maybe not have started to um, get in the game, learn how to do real estate development hands on, meet with an architect, meet with an electrician, meet with a plumber, meet with a carpenter, meet with a roofer and get you right in the game. And once you do that, you'll also have a mentor and people that you can reach out to. Like I said, anyone who comes to us, you get access to us, too. And you also get a, um, information about the other other side of the game. Right. So real estate in the stock market, like. One of the things that we got Malik to do over this past year, we got Malik in the, in the stock market heavy, man. So heavy, heavy. we got him in there heavy now. So now we, we about building wealth in a multitude of ways. And we want to make sure that we bring that to the community. Um, We got a question. Uh, do y'all think I could be a real estate investor in Mobile, Alabama? I'm in the deep Listen, south. You can, get, you can get rich in Mobile. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't, don't talk about Mobile. My, fo- my dad from Birmingham. Mobile ain't that far from there, man. Listen, no Listen, you, can get, you can get rich in Mobile. Don't, don't feel discouraged. discouraged, man. Don't feel discouraged. Um, My, you know, is 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 money to be made everywhere, man. Is 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 dollars everywhere, hey, every city. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, right? The the dude, the dude that really encouraged Register Builder. Just talk to me, yeah, right? Register Builder. Oh, yeah, is in Reg, Reg, IG, yeah. Right, he's in Chattanooga, Tennessee, getting rich down there. And he's the one that that encouraged me and gave me the confidence to start doing real estate. In a small town, North Carolina, so you can get rich in Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, because one, right one of the things I want you to talk about that before we got it. One of the things you started doing is you started expanding your business outside of Philadelphia. So now you own rental property in a different state, no, right? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm so I'm flipping one in Durham, and I bought three other vacant lots in North Carolina. And um, and the reason why I decided to go to North Carolina, one is my second home. You know, North Carolina Central University. You know, Eagle Pride, and um. And so my, my partners are down there, and so it's a little strategic. As like I got somebody in there to watch the projects, when even when when I'm not there. But what I bought down there, we bought our three lots. We paid we paid like eighteen thousand for all three lots, and the lots total up to one acre. The three different parts, one acre, and now I'm in like, in like 15, 16 grand for uh for that. And so we could be really creative. We're in Philly, fourteen feet wide, eighty feet deep. You know, that's kind of you could fit whatever you could fit. But on the third of an acre, we could really get get creative. You know, yeah, so don't, don't feel discouraged in, in Mobile, Alabama, because like I, I know Corey just bought some land in Texas is getting ready to break ground. You already broke ground today. Are you breaking ground, Corey? I, I broke some ground today, man. And I'm, I, I just got my folks out there to just, you know, um to do some. um some preliminary stuff before we start to build, man. Because I'm going, yeah, so, I'm gonna drop a, some, um, get some landscaping done. They going, um, you know, do my driveway, my crib, everything. You know, what I mean, to, to get it set up. So we we yeah. doing the preliminary stuff right man. now. For that. Also, what I'm, what I'm gonna say is this, man. If you're in Mobile, Alabama, just know this for a fact: um, marijuana is is finna be legal. So you you know you might want to figure out some acreage to put you a grow house because it's going to be legal off of the states um, very soon. So go ahead and you know start get, get you something for some grow house you know because it's going to be there. So yeah, go ahead. If you need help or anything, um 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 you know just reach out to us, shoot us an inbox or something like that. Um you know we we'll try to help you or find someone down there who's already out there moving and try to connect you with them because um you know our network is across the country but Malik man I just want to say thanks good brother man thanks for your time and for Listen, the folks thanks, watching thanks right? you, know, me, you know once again to, to every, uh, you know happy homecoming of all my HBCU folk you know so we can't we can't do it this year. I do this one more time man before we got I gotta I gotta put you on the summer jam screen and show everybody that amazing hoodie you got on that says black wealth is black power Right. Oh, that, is a, that is a buy the hood exclusive that he just popped up on. So Malik support. Thank you for the support because those are available on our site. Click the link in our bio. You can get those hoodies. Black wealth is black power. Um, that's one of our slogans and we mean that. Um, and also real quick, in terms of our buy the hood podcast, we just dropped an amazing episode this past Wednesday with Erica. Woo! Erica, Bye. beast. 
She's a six figure, she's a six figure YouTube earner. She owns 10 trucks. She owns real estate across the country. And she um, you know, was generous with her time and talked to us about that. That's up now. We have a um, hotel. Don't forget the building yeah, hotel. Yeah, she's building a hotel. Yeah, I can bring that up. <laughs> yeah, we, um, she a we got another. We got another episode dropping next Wednesday um, with a brother who quit his job and everything and makes tons and tons of money trading cryptocurrency, a mm -hmm. whole new space that, you know, we got black folks in making money hand over fist. Like I was telling them before, before earlier in the show, like he put me down with a way to make 20 percent of my money without dealing with tenants. And I love it. So, um, yeah, man. So make sure you check those things out, man. This Sunday. We're going to be on the Black Wealth Project. Malik will be with us. It's myself, Corey, Malik. Um, we got the Ivy Investors going to be on there. Kamari's going to be on there, as well as Tracy Powell, one of the top real estate brokers in this area. Um, and we're going to be talking Black Wealth this Sunday. So the work on our page is what's called the Black Wealth Project. That'll be this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, I know Tom is out here running, so he's been blacked out on the screen. But, Tom, we appreciate you checking in anyway. Listen, Tom yeah, is a Tom. hustler, man. Yeah, Tom man. Is awesome yo, hustler, he, man. yo, to be honest... He he probably my favorite young boy that I came across, man, because he really be at it, man. Like, and if he yeah. got questions, he oh he picked that phone up and he get right to yeah, you. Like, man, you. Man, other young boys under his wing, too. I appreciate that about him too. Yeah, and I like that Tom definitely does, man. Tom Tom hires people younger than him, uh, same age, works across. And Tom is a hustler. Make sure you guys check out Tom on IG because Tom got a gazillion hustles. He got the merch out, um, and he got his course. And but him and Malik coming together for this course. Is going to be very this powerful. Is crazy. This is powerful. I can't, I can't wait to see the people that come out of this because we'll have new real estate developers as well as investors. And if we got to say so, you're going to learn how to take that money you make and build wealth by buying companies. So we're going to bring it all together and make it one big like wealth building. Uh, per, you know, we got individuals coming out here going to be full full tycoons. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, man. Shout out to everybody uh who giving us feedback on that interview, man, because that interview was amazing, man. Shout out to Mark who said it was a uh, Said that was a good interview. Um, our brother Don checking in. Yeah, he said that was an amazing interview. Um, so and, and also to checking in again, how often do we we do a live chat? Um, we do a live chat every Friday at 7 p.m. It's 7 until like we just have conversations, however long they go, they go. But every Friday you can check us out here. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you subscribe, share this. We appreciate that. Um, a couple last more comments before we get out of here. Uh let's see. I would love to quit my job and do my own thing. You know it's bad when you're getting paid. All you do is move a mouse because it's slow, and you still want to move on. Yeah, that sounds. <laughs> hey, listen, man. We know, everybody knows that feeling, man. Adrian, listen, we appreciate the support. Adrian's always checking in with us, and we appreciate the support. Sure. And listen, man, we wanna, we want to help you do that. If that's what you want to do, we want to help you do that, man. If you, you want to keep it, she's in Chicago, right? Yeah, Adrian, you in Chicago? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's so much money in Chicago right now. Listen, that. Let's, all I do, I listen to the rappers. Oh, o Block, that's where I'm buying that. I, I was about to ask, <laughs> I was about to ask Adrian. I was about to say, Adrian, you ain't from 63rd, are you? I mean, you know, I, I, I was trying to see if you're from 63rd or not. But, you know, um, <laughs> so, so hold up, though. You said you listen to what they talk about and you want to buy there. Yeah, listen. I see, I, I, listen, I see what you're saying now. You say you want to go to the worst places and buy property or buy land. Buy it. Buy it. Listen, I'm the I would, worst places. And, and provide. I, listen, I had this. I, I had this conversation. I had this conversation earlier this week with Carrie. I was like, "Dog, if we just go to the absolute worst neighborhood and just buy and just sit on it, just, just sit listen, on it, literally just sit on it." Yeah, and just do. It. Listen, and listen, the Detroit, Detroit back now. Of uh, Rashana Scott, that's where she's from. I like, I like Rashana. Rashana, I met her. I like her. She's, she's from Shot Town. Um, yeah, yeah, dog, yeah. you know, Detroit was so bad a couple years ago. Um, my man Dev, me and him was like talking about buying something out there at the time, and we actually called some agents and all that. And the properties were so bad, the blocks were so bad that like we were laughing and like, no, nah, we ain't buying it. Like, I played myself at the time because I could have been sitting on several, several million. Um, not that I'm not or I am because I'm broke, baby. But listen, it was so bad that Silver Dome was selling for like 207,000. I'm talking about the state Lions play. Selling it for like two hundred and some odd thousand. That's how bad it was out there at the time. Man, you should have bought that stadium. You should have bought that shit. You should have seen it. And open the church. And open the church in the gym. Yeah, right. Yo, yes, I'm in Chicago. My cousin is in real estate, and I'm thinking about being an appraiser. I'm by UIC. Yeah. Okay, so you're not from Sixty Third. But listen though, 
do that become an appraiser let me tell you something i have a um i have a, a um a government appraisal license here in pennsylvania and what i do know from um doing work in appraisal is like the average age of an appraiser across the entire industry is like um almost 70 it's in his mid 60s it's like 65 66 somewhere around there that it's going to be a huge need for appraisers in real estate but what i will say is make sure you study some technology because the future of appraising is mass appraisals and modeling right Analytics are taking over every industry. So if you, that's something you want to do, make sure you understand math and analytics. And I'll leave it at that, though. But Malik, man, listen, you know, we, we go all day, man. Malik, me, one day this week, me and Malik are going to IG Live, and me and Malik are going to argue about an argument we have every day, which is uh, Malik believes that we'll have, like, um, autonomous cars within the next couple of years, and I don't believe it. So we're going to have that. No, no, no more than 12, 12 max. We're gonna, 12 max. We're going to have that debate this week on IG Live. We're going to have an autonomous car debate on IG Live. So stay stay looked out Malik, for that. You know, Malik just don't believe how fucking slow our government moved. This listen, dude man, really don't, don't know. Listen, man, listen, leave it alone. We're going to have this debate on, on IG Live. Malik, think, Malik ain't think everybody like him. Like, all right, I see hey, that man, shit. Listen, I see stop, what's stop, about the pop. I'm at the mute court, man. He's taking all my points, man. Listen, we'll have that debate on IG Live, man. Just want to say um, thank you to everybody for checking in. We appreciate all the support. Um, as always, uh, our book, On Your Time and Space, you can get that at the link in our bio. Our merch, um, like the hoodie that Malik got on, um, you know, you can find that in our bio. All of our that, podcasts, baby. all of our content, that power, baby. everything we do, you can find at the link in our bio. Just want to say thank you to all the support because we have a lot of supporters out there. We appreciate it. Um, and we'll continue to bring you value and bring you um, amazing guests and amazing content. And also to everybody inboxes, I'll make sure you get the link for this course. And, you know, uh, hopefully somebody from this audience is going to become a developer because we can all start working together and we can start acquiring neighborhoods. All right. That's the goal for us to get together and acquire neighborhoods. And it starts by, you know, working on one property and learning how the game goes. Cause like Malik said, you can't buy four or 500 houses by itself, but as a collective, we can make amazing moves, man. So with that being said, man, for my brother Malik, for Corey, for Tom, I just want to say thank you, and we'll be back here next Friday, 7 p.m. sharp, and we'll see you then. Peace. Peace. Mm.